everyone, welcome back to the last episode of Otoshi Monologues Chris Cracks Korea, my excuse to talk, rant, and embarrass myself in front of all of y'all. It may have been a quick series, but you know what they say, short and sweet. Today is gonna be different than previous episodes, it's gonna be one big lesson time. As I share my experience of getting back to the US, and hopefully someone out there can learn from my experience so it doesn't happen to them. And then we'll do a 180 from the serious stuff and end with a review of Korean strawberries. They're magical. So let's get started. I got back to the Coco residence at around 10 p.m. and then finished packing all my stuff and then checked my itinerary one last time to make sure that everything was correct. And that's what triggered the longest 24 hours of my life. A little background, during this trip abroad, I booked a flight from the US to Japan and then Japan to Korea and then Korea back to the good old US of A. Since I pit stopped in Korea, all of these flights were one-way flights, and for cost effectiveness, the cheapest options usually include a layover somewhere in China. On my way to Japan, I had a layover in Hong Kong, and on my way back, I was supposed to have a layover in Qingdao. After I had booked this flight, I got an email from US Online Support, and they notified me that the airline I booked with changed the travel itinerary and they need an email reply whether or not you can accept the change. This already happened to me one time before when I booked through Air China. They changed the layover time from 4 hours to 24 hours in Beijing. So I emailed the US online support people asking them what my options were if I couldn't accept the change. And you can either work with them to find flights using the same airline with times that work for you, or you can request a full refund and book another flight yourself. So I looked at flight prices and flights using China Eastern Airlines were $100 cheaper than the flight I had booked through Air China. So I requested the full refund and that's how I ended up here with this new flight, but in basically the same situation to where I was before. Except this change appeared to only be changing the location of my layover from Qingdao to Shanghai. So I thought, yeah, why wouldn't I accept? It makes no difference to me. So I send the email and I think everything is hunky-dory up until 10 p.m. the night before my 8 a.m. flight. Upon closer inspection of the changed itinerary, I noticed that the first flight was still going from Incheon to Qingdao. However, the connecting flight was leaving out of Shanghai with five hours in between. At first I was in denial and thought it must be a typo because I looked at the China Eastern website and they had a flight leaving from Seoul to Shanghai at the same time as the flight from Seoul to Qingdao. So I reached out to the US online support people to double check, but they said, nope, that's correct. And I cracked. Full panic mode set in and I scrambled to call my mom for guidance. And she told me that I should get to the airport as soon as possible because it would be better to figure out things from there rather than the Airbnb. The only problem was that the regular buses and trains already stopped running and Google Maps in Korea doesn't have the full night bus schedule but I gather all my stuff and walk on over to the bus stop, see the signs that there's actually not a bus coming, and then hurry my way on over to the other bus stop that's a 15 minute walk away, making tons of noise with my rolling luggage on these crooked soul streets until I finally made it to a station with a night bus schedule. But now I have to wait 20 minutes in the freezing cold Seoul night, and then I have to transfer and wait another 20 minutes for the next bus, and then transfer again onto a night airport limousine, taking me to the lovely time of 2 a.m. by the time I finally reached Incheon International Airport. Lucky for me, Incheon has a lot of people that sleep overnight waiting for their morning flights, and security guards are always walking around, so it's very safe, even if you fall asleep with all your luggage hanging out. And now it was time to blast emails and phone calls to figure out how to get home. US online support told me that I would have to talk to the airline directly if I wanted to change my flight and I would have to pay the difference, which I thought was pretty reasonable because when I looked online, the Seoul to Shanghai flight was only $13 more than the one from Seoul to Qingdao. Problem was that there's nobody at the check-in desks until 6 a.m. So it was time to move on to plan B. There's an organization called STA, which my university recommended that we book our flights through, which I did and they have a 24 hour hotline, which is a 1-800 number. So I thought it would be toll free. Oops. I explained my situation while sitting on the airport floor and the phone operator told me that he was gonna call the airline and see what he could do. Little problem here too. I don't have a phone plan while I'm in Korea, so there's no way for him to call me back. But luckily I asked if I could give my mom's phone number and then my mom could communicate with me 
through the internet-based communication services. I understand that some people may not be as lucky as I was, but I definitely understand the value of having an emergency contact now. So my mom talked to the STA travel person and then relayed all the information back to me. And China Eastern said that if I wanted to change flights, it would cost me $900. Why? I have no idea. That's over 2.5 times more expensive than my original flight. And there would be a 0% refund if I chose to cancel the flights. I was having a great time. So my mom said it would make more sense to just ignore the China Eastern flight and book another flight home because all the other flight options were cheaper than $900 and you don't have to deal with this airline anymore. So through STA travel, we book a direct flight home from Incheon to SFO. It was approximately $600, but at that point, what else could I do? It was 4 a.m. by the time that we sorted all of this out and the United flight doesn't leave until 6 p.m. So that's how I ended up at the airport for 16 hours. I said I wouldn't mind spending some time checking out this airport, but never in a million years did I think that this was gonna be the reason why I got to do it. But before I share my short montage at the airport, I think we need a review time. Looking back at this experience, I understand that the whole situation was my fault. If I had just noticed the inconsistency back when they sent it to me, I would have been fine. What? Let me complain for the sake of complaining for a moment. Like what in the absolute heck, China Eastern? First off, how could you change the flight itineraries and not have the arriving and departing flights leave from the same airport? Especially when you need a visa to travel around China. So even if it was physically possible to get from Qingdao to Shanghai in five hours, which it's not, foreigners are not legally allowed to travel around China without a visa. And second, how could you charge that much to change a flight that was literally less than $100? I didn't even know that airports could do that. Even if I try to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that I was the only passenger traveling from Incheon to Qingdao to SFO, so maybe they just overlooked it, I have to suspect some sort of purposefulness when there was a flight from Seoul to Shanghai leaving at the same time. In my conspiracy world, I'm thinking they get unsuspecting international travelers who accept this itinerary change, don't see the mistake until they go to check in, where the staff will say, Oh. Your only option is to like pay $900 to change your flight, which you're inclined to do because the flight is so close to leaving. So then they just pocket all that money. The other red flag is that it happened on China Air as well. Not as severe, but I mean, where are you supposed to spend 28 plus hours at the Beijing airport? I have no proof that they're doing this on purpose, but it does seem like an awfully big money scheme. Lessons learned from this experience. Number one. I gotta be more careful at reading. I definitely will be reading more fine prints on things and double checking before I commit to anything. Number two, avoid all China airlines unless you can speak Chinese. Number three, don't try to be penny wise when it comes to these things. I tried to get the cheapest flights taking layovers here and there, but with my mess ups, the cost of my flights total ended up being the same as if I had just done a round trip from the US to Japan and then threw in a round trip from Japan to Korea in there too. And number four, I have a really, really supportive family and I'm really, really lucky for that. My mom and my sister basically dropped everything to help me figure out what I needed to do. In the moment, I was the most stressed out that I had ever been and I don't wish this experience on anyone. But in retrospect, I am appreciative for having to go through this. It taught me the importance of staying calm in an emergency and to always move forward. Sure, something bad happened, but if you wallow in your sorrows or freeze because of fear, it can only get worse. Alrighty, rant time is over, at least for now. Briskly going through the next half a day, I sat around a lot, slept in random places, returned my pocket Wi-Fi at some point, picked my luggage back up, ate some Korean Burger King with a bulgogi chicken sandwich. It was meh. Fries taste the same though. Did all my check-in and security procedures and finally got to explore the inside of the airport for the last three hours of this torture. They have a lot to do in here. It's just that you can't get in here until close to your flight time. But they have cultural centers and Korean souvenir places. Saw Pink Fong, AKA the makers of Baby Shark. A reenactment of a royal parade. Some things behind glass cases. Spent my last chunk of Korean won on some Twice Kakao Talk collab merch 
with this lovely blanket. Honestly, it was one of the only highlights from that day. Got one last international boba from Street, equally as subpar as that Burger King. And I was 100% ready to just get on that plane and go home. And finally, my wish was granted. United States, here I come. After some plain food and various in-flight b-rolls later, I was back in the good old state of California. It was a wild time, but all's well that ends well, I guess. My lovely parents picked me up from the airport. My first meal was at a good old American diner for some very American, super unhealthy waffles. And a short car ride later, and I was finally back home. Tadaima! Where the best surprise ever was waiting for me. Loads of persimmons! Gosh, I love myself a good persimmon. Speaking of fruit, let's end this series on a sweeter note with a good old Korean strawberry taste test and review. Welcome back to my fruit eating ASMRs. We got some strawberries for you. So my sister told me to find strawberries. She said, look to pay between 5,000 and 8,000 won. All the strawberries were like 10,000 won, which is too expensive. But then, since I was in the market for so long, I kept walking back and forth on the same stores, and then things started going on sale. So, I got this container for 8,000 won, but I figured if they were 10,000 won strawberries, then they better taste like 10,000 won strawberries. Oh, lovely. Ooh, look at those strawberries. Ah. Lovely scent. You may be wondering if I'm gonna wash them, and I'm gonna say no because they look pretty clean, and also I don't wanna leave and go wash the strawberries and run in to strangers. Second bite was like a bite of a regular strawberry, but wow, it actually is pretty different. I have to say. Also, these leaves are like so much fuller, you know, it looks more natural. Let's do one more big strawberry and. first bite is insane. It's not necessarily like more, more like punching strawberry. It's just like better quality strawberry. Dang. Definitely worth it. There's so many in this box. I'm going to be eating them all. Lovely. These strawberries are truly on their own level of amazing. I bought the box on my very first night in Seoul, and every night I would eat a couple as my midnight dessert. Best idea I've had all month. And with that, the Chris Cracks Korea Otoshi Monologue series has officially ended. Thank you so much for coming on this journey with me. I know it ended on a rather strange note, but if my experience can help anyone out there so they don't have to go through something similar, that's why I wanted to share it. If you've been following along since the start of my study abroad journey back in Japan, extra claps for you. How you watch through all of these episodes is a mystery to me, but you'd know that this series has taken me a really long time to complete. I'm extremely grateful for all the support I've received throughout this process, and to my past self, we did it. You set your mind to finish something, and you finally got it done. Congrats. Hope you all have a fantastic day and night, and I'll talk to you all next time I do something interesting. Annyeonghaseya! I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs>